visit the wind over my shoulder? Is it the wind that I hear gently whispering? Are you alone? There in the valley No, not alone For you walk, you walk with me Is it the wind there over my shoulder? Is it your voice calling quietly over the hilltop down in the valley? Never alone for you walk with me when evening falls and the air gets colder. When shadows cover the road I am following, will I be alone? There in the darkness, no, not alone, not alone, and I'll never be, never alone. You are walking, you're walking. Is it the wind there over my shoulder? Is it your voice calling quietly over the hilltop down in the valley? Never alone for you walk with me over the hilltop down in the valley. The reading of the names of deceased members began during the AIDS crisis in the 80s. As you may know, queer equity members were dying at alarming rates, and all too often, these members were dying alone. Equities Council decided to honor deceased members by standing and reading their names aloud. Then there would be a time for personal remembrances and stories, eulogies, funny anecdotes. And for a time, this beautiful tradition was just for those attending the monthly council meetings. Thanks to a resolution in the Black Theater Matters Bill in the 2021 convention and a resolution passed by Equity Council a few months ago, this tradition is now open to all. And here we are. Um, I wasn't gonna say this, but I think it's appropriate. Um, the names that you saw as you entered the Zoom um, while the beautiful Full Monty song was playing were the members that died between January and March. Um, we are doing this meeting quarterly and so we are honoring the members um, from April to June, but because we hadn't had a meeting yet, I really wanted those names up there so we could at least see those names when you entered. So here we go. As we read these names, we ask you to offer us a little grace with pronunciation. We are doing our very best. Now I am honored to introduce James A. Williams, Maureen Moore, and Kim Titus to read the names of equity members that passed between April 1st in June 30th of 2022. Member losses in April. Ray Allen. Steve Ames. Jay Bonnell. Robert Christoph. Edward Claudio. Taryn Cohen. Philip Cuomo, 
Michael Dalton, David DeBeese, Richard S. Fulmer, Margaret A. Gaz, Estelle Harris, Frederick C. Jackson, Ron Keith, Yuriko Kikuchi, Teresa Labreglio, Onat Matter, Louis Merkin, Ruby J. Millsap, Richard R. Montgomery, Robert Morse, Larry Newman Jr., Michael Ooms, Nehemiah Persoff, Christopher Puckett, Hollis C. Resnick, Bobby Rydell, Liz Sheridan, Peg Small, Boz Snyder, Paul Vandergrift. Member losses in May. Mark Allen, Lynn Ann Ross, Joanna Barnes, Amanda Beeson, David E. Burney, Gary Bullock, Ron Byrne, Barbara Collentine, Bob Elkins, Thomas J. Fanotti. Mike Haggerty, June Hansen, Catherine Hayes, Josara Gennaro, Jack Keller, Adam Loring Coster, Hester Llewellyn, Margie Martin, Nikki Mason, Michael Malden, Beverly May, Anthony Michael Marcus, Lynn Montgomery, James R. Olson, Maggie Peterson, Calvin E. Remsburg, Brian Richards, Bonnie Schoen, Marnie Schulenberg, Ron Schwinn, Roland Sector, D. J. Sullivan, Ian Sullivan, John Tormey, Jerry Van Dorn, Dominic Leo Verducci, Peter Virgo, Fred Ward, Kenneth Welsh, Peter Yoshida. Number losses in June. Ernest Abuba, Maureen Arthur, John Aylward, Charlotte Cornwell, Julie Cruz, Roberta B. Agard, Louis Fox, John Keith Gilbert, Philip Baker Hall, James Haney, Joel Nathan King, Lee Lawson, Ray Leota, Bruce McVitie, Barbara Mayer, Lev Mailer, Mary Mara, Doris Martin, Sidney H. Mayer, Patrick L. Nugent, Bernard Hasseltanner, Shanil Perry, Maxine Prescott, James Rado, Kathleen Roby, Robert H. Satterley, Roberta Sosville, Larry Venson, Craig S. Watson, Robert Weber, Brenna H. Weiss, Bob McDuff Wilson, Janet E. Wyckoff.
Thank you. Um, I'm really moved that we did that. This was um, a long thing coming and we haven't had the names read in a little bit. And I'm very proud that we are doing this today. Um, all right, we have about 44 minutes left in our meeting. We don't have to use all 44 minutes, but in that time, we would like to open the meeting to individual remembrances, anecdotes, celebrations, stories. Please keep your statements to two minutes. We want time for everyone who wants to speak to get the chance. And I would like to remind you all one more time of the kind, respectful, and positive tone we wish to create in this meeting. If you would like to speak, please use the raise your hand feature. It can be found under the reactions tab at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Equity staff will give you permission to turn on your mic and camera and I will call on you. So the floor is open. I see Deborah Jean Templin. If we can uh, give Deborah allowances. Bear with us for one second. Maybe I can do it. Can you hear me? I can. Hello, can I, Deborah Jean. Are we supposed to be able to be seen or no? Um, if you would like to turn on your camera, that would be great. I'm going to ask you to start your video. Did that work? I nope, it didn't work. Wait a minute. Well, I see you. I see you. Go ahead and speak. Tell us. Okay. I'm. <clears throat> Ron Schwinn, he was a theater athlete, 35 years on Broadway, 13 Broadway shows. He started to dance when he was five years old. He started to partner when he was six or seven. And I have to say that any woman who was thrown in the air by Ron Schwinn actually came to the ICU to visit him. Some of them were in their 80s, but they remembered. Because if you ever partnered with Ron Schwinn, you knew he had your back. He was disciplined. He always came to the at 30. He always said, five minutes early, you know, a half an hour early is late. He loved the theater. There was a sense of perfection about what he did. He loved animals. And every Monday we would go to the Bronx Zoo during the pandemic. Animals move finished and complete gifted with extensions of senses we have lost or never attained. Living by voices we shall never hear. He heard those voices. When he would go to the gorilla cage, the gorilla would tap on the wall and then tap on like the wrist and then go like this, like it's time to feed me. <laughs> he had a special relationship with those animals. He was the only son of an only son of an only son. He was first brought to the zoo with his grandparents in Cincinnati. He taught me what it meant to woodshed something, to practice it enough that you did it right. We met on the national tour of Annie. We've been friends for 42 years. And I'm so glad attention is being paid to him in this way. And this is what we look like when we would go to the zoo. He was a member of the um, World Wide Wildlife Federation and the Bronx Zoo for over 40 years. And he cared about people and his partners. He worked with some of the best, and I was honored to be his friend and to live with him in the West Village for 20 years and be able to find my way around down there. 
I will miss him, and I love the song you chose to play as you as the names were read. That's all he was. It really was. <laughs> he would laugh and say, it's always better on a Schwinn. And it is. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, thank you. Well, obviously, I'm not holding people to a two minute rule. If your heart is flowing, I'm not gonna, no, please talk, please. We have 40 minutes. So thank you so much for sharing that. This is, I'm so moved and thank you for opening yourself up to all of us on this Zoom. I really appreciate it. All right, I'm gonna bring in Diane Nicole. Okay. Hey, oh, good. how are you? Deborah, Hi, thank you for that. That was beautiful. And I truly, I truly appreciate it. I didn't know Ron well, but everybody who did know him well was amazed to be able to work with him. Um, I'd like to speak today about Kathy Roby. Um, I learned about Kathy Roby passing by reading about this um, on the list. Um, Kathy and I have been friends for about 50 years and um, she probably put me into three or four shows. Kathy came from Seattle, Washington as a ballet dancer and started her career probably in the 1950s at some point in time. Um, she moved from dancer to dance captain on a number of shows. And after many years of doing that and serving on council for a very many number of years, um, she moved on to staff, but she was the force that mentored me and brought me to council and equity and got me on committees and got me to serve on council, et cetera. Um, she was one of a kind. She was always joyful, precise in her work and, and honest in everything that she did. She was a great humanitarian and decided in her, I guess, 30s or 40s to become a Buddhist. Um, and she served that well. And when she lived in New York and after she moved down to Florida. Um, when she was in Florida, she and her husband, Wilson, who was also an actor and who passed away in 2013, she became very active in dealing with animal welfare down there and served on many different boards and community functions. So I just want to acknowledge her and her greatness. Um, when I heard about her, I had to try and find out how, why, when she passed away. And thank you for Facebook. Even though I hate it sometimes, I was able to locate people down in Florida who knew her and I did get to speak with them and, and they did tell me that her COPD was just too extensive and got to her. But um, she didn't want a hoopla, she had no obituary done. And I just felt that we needed to recognize her in some capacity for all she's done for the theater community. So thank you, Kathy Roby. Thank you, Kathy Roby. Thank you, Diane. You're welcome. Um, I see Virginia Ronchetti. I'm gonna ask you to unmute. Hi. Hi, Virginia. Hi. I'm here to remember Terrence Keene, uh, born Terrence Jablonski. I met Terry in 1985 when I came down from Toronto to do a five week course with Michael Shirtliff. We did a scene together, a Neil Simon scene, which was a great success. We bonded and um, a couple of years later, I got my green card, came back to live in New York and um, we kept in touch from, sometimes I worked for him. He, he ran a small, he, you know, like uh, many others <laughs> had to, find ways to make a living besides, you know, acting. And he ran a small um, um, travel company out of his uh, apartment, uh, arranging tours to Russia. Um, 
we had our bumps, um, but we became close again in the last 15 years or so. He had, I've never known Terry to have any pets and all the time I knew him, but he adopted. He adopted two cats, Otto, who actually sent him to the hospital with a, an infection, and then Graydon, who calmed Otto down, who calmed Otto down. Um, they, were, they were just his babies. Um, he had recently been able to get more active in his career and he wasn't wasting any time. Um, he was also very active on Facebook with very many political comments. And we probably know whose side he was on. Um, in, in January, I went to his Facebook page and because I hadn't heard from him in a while, and found that he had passed away. Uh, apparently he died of a heart attack. He, he was with his partner. I'm not sure if it was during a trip to Mexico or on the return, but um, I, I was shocked. And I was kind of sad because there weren't that many comments on his Facebook page. <sighs> Terry, You were a perfectionist. I admire your zeal in devoting yourself again to your vocation. Your babies, Otto and Graydon, have been rehomed. They are safe and loved. I'm, I miss you. I wish, I wish I'd been in touch with you a bit sooner before January. Terry, rest in peace. Thank you. Rest in peace, Terry. Thank you, Virginia. Um, I'm going to call him Pat Loeb first, but let me just say, you don't even have to have known the person. <laughs> um, for example, I will say, seeing Robert Morse in the film of How to Succeed changed my life, and it made me want to do musical theater. Now, I never knew the man. I wish I knew the man, but he passed here, and that's just a small remembrance. So. Maybe someone was a stage manager for a two week stock contract you did, or maybe you saw them on stage. Feel free to raise your hand and talk about it. Hi, Pat, welcome. Hi, Todd. I wanna to speak on behalf of Lewis Merkin. Um, after Phyllis Freilich and Fred Norman raised him up to be a voice in the deaf community, he broke down so many doors. I had the honor to work with him um, after he had been on Broadway and at the Mark Taper where it originated for Children of a Lesser God, he was the original Oren in Children. And um, there has been among the deaf and signing and interpreting community an outpouring. Uh, but I am not aware of the people in the equity community knowing the kinds of things that he did to raise up deaf actors, to teach deaf students to dramaturg, um, not just at places like Gallaudet, but at hearing places, you know, to integrate sign language with verbal, uh, with people who could hear in order to really bang open the kinds of doors that are, are now being opened and entered by people like Troy Kutzer, and those people that I, I were friends of mine, um, but they're the generation after him. Um, and the reason, we aren't trying is because the thing about Lewis is he left everybody in laughter. Everything was about joy and living life to the fullest and discovery and just being the most opening and welcoming human being that you could possibly hope to meet. Um, when I think of Lewis, I laugh at the death jokes that he taught me and the remarks that he made about the differences between deaf culture and hearing culture and the fact that he felt so open and welcoming to those of us who were not fortunate enough to be deaf and to understand deaf culture. Um, he was a remarkable actor. He was a remarkable dramaturg. He was a remarkable human. He recently did one of the Broadway sign videos um, when they did Company. Uh, he played Larry. Larry? I think he played Larry. It was a while back. Um, if anybody wants to check that out. But, you know, he was a door. He was from Philadelphia. 
and he, you know, loved his family back in Philadelphia. And we learned all sorts of interesting regionalisms. Um, but anyway, I'm, I'm rambling because I just, the thought of Lewis makes me smile. And I want to make sure that people in our community know the huge impact he had on performers, both deaf and hearing, uh, disabled and not. And that's the right, the right language right now because it's shifting again. But you know, the, the, the impact he had on literally everyone to open his heart and welcome them in and make them all feel a part of the family. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. I didn't know that about Lewis. Thank you for sharing. Um, I see Nandita Shinoy. Hi, Nandita. Hi, Tom. Um, I just wanted to acknowledge my friend, Marnie Schulenberg, who passed in May. And just, um, I met her doing a showcase downtown um, of a new play. And I just want to say that Marnie made everything more fun. Thank you. Thank you, Nandita. Um, I see, oh, I see Mary Cronin. Hi. Hi, Mary. How are you? I'm good. Thank, Thank you for joining us. Thank you for doing this. Um, sure. I want to honor um, Hollis Resnick. Um, I'm here in Chicago and we both had an opportunity. I, we both, I performed the same, I performed Mrs. Nordstrom and she performed Countess Charlotte in a little night music at the Goodman. And then we did the same roles at Ravinia. And when I was at Ravinia, um, I was going through some <clears throat> personal things in my own life. And I remember going into the restroom and talking to this person who was my understudy and saying, I'm not ready to do this. I don't feel right about this. And, and Hollis Resnick, I have to tell you, is a, was a force to be reckoned with. And she performed in so many things. She was a just a pro and a fabulous actress and singer. And so who walks out of the stall but Hollis Resnick? And she comes over to me, looks me straight in the eye, eyes and said, you are where you're supposed to be. You know, don't, ever, don't doubt yourself. And I have to tell you, um, and this was years ago, this touched me so much. Um, uh, also, just be careful when you're in the bathroom with who you're talking about anyway, or if you're talking, <laughs> but I, it, it really, um, it really made me shake off any insecurities I had and, um, and do my job. And, um, and that's what Hollis did. Hollis always did her job. She was a pro, just a real pro. And, and in looking at the names, I'm sorry, when, they, when I'm reading through the names, I'm going, oh, I hope I don't see anybody. And I realized there was a woman, her woman, Laura Collins on there that I worked with years ago. And we, she, we were, we were friends and, um, she looks she passed away she was in Ve las vegas and she passed away in march so i just wanted to say she was a real sweetheart but again thank you so much for doing this i appreciate it thank you mary uh, i see judy rice hello <laughs> hi there hi judy how are you i'm fine forgive the rather zooty background it's from a, an actors equity foundation event and I should just got to get rid of that one of these days, but I don't think I will. Anyway, um, I think it's very nice to be able to follow Mary because as a native Chicagoan, where I began working, I'm speaking for another native Chicagoan uh, from my cousin, uh, Mike Haggerty, who died in May. It delighted me to discover that one of my dearest treasured friends, Maureen Moore, Wound, read his name today and the, an, another Irish girl. So that, that makes me very happy. Um, Mike uh, was a younger cousin of mine. He, you probably are familiar with him. Some of my pals here already know about Mike, but Mike was, um, if you had a chance to see the Bridget Everett series recently, Somebody Somewhere, Mike played her father. Uh, he played the super on Friends that taught Joey how to dance. And a lot of people may remember him from a movie called Overboard with Goldie Hawn and Kurt Russell. He was Kurt Russell's best friend. And this is, that, that's Mike. Yeah, so you might know him. Um, 
Mike would be thrilled to know that his name was being read here uh, from his parent union. He made most of his career in uh, Los Angeles, being a wonderful character actor that he was. But he, after college, he honed his craft, appropriately enough, at Second City in Chicago. So it was a, a wonderful preparation for the career that he had in Los Angeles. Apart from being a wonderful actor, Mike was a wonderful human being, the son of a cop who was still waiting for him to get a real job to make sure he had insurance. And uh, he never met a pint of Guinness that he didn't love and never met a stranger that didn't become his best friend. Uh, he was he was a treasure of a man. And as shocking as it was and sad for us to lose him, he left us at the top of his game. And that that is a great comfort to his family, myself included. I also, I know you've got more time and maybe more people, but I would like to thank Todd and the committee for coming up with this concept. And I hope everybody spreads the word. Um, it has been a long time in the evolving to do something that would be appropriate and, and comfortable for anyone who wanted to participate and still honor the members who, whether they were well known or not known at all, except to their friends and act, fellow actors, they they were members of this association and they should be honored for the, the years of dedication that they showed. So thank you all for, for coming up with this concept. And uh, I think look for, looking forward to the next one is probably a misnomer, but uh, I'm, I'm glad to know that they'll be happening. Thank you. Thank you, Judy. I think we actors and stage managers lead noble lives and especially us, us union members that stick together to uplift each other. And we deserve to have our names read when we pass. Um, I'm sorry if I pronounce your name wrong, name wrong, James. James Dibus? Yes, okay. that's me. Hi. Thank Hi, James. you so much for hosting this. It's, uh, sure. it, this is just terrific. And thank you, everybody, for sharing your, your wonderful memories of our dear, beloved friends who have passed. I want to remember Jeffrey Johnson, the casting director. This man helped so many actors in the industry and was an extraordinary, loving, kind human being. Whenever I would go up to uh, audition for something and Jeff was there with his business partner, Vinnie Liff, who has also passed, it was always such a joy to be there with those two men who you knew were supporting you, who were rooting for you, and who one more time brought you in for yet another show. And you know, he worked with everybody. He worked with Hal Prince and Andrew Lloyd Webber and David Merrick and Noel Coward had him as a stage manager in Sail Away. And he became very good friends with Noel Coward over the years and um, uh, just uh, became a part of the uh, low battery power. <laughs> he became, he became, uh, he was uh, uh, very active in the Noel Coward Foundation as well. Um, so I just wanted to remember Jeff because, you know, so many of those people that are not on stage, but are there for us to support and to be there to help us go on to the next thing that we do in the business are uh, sadly missed, sadly missed. Jeff Johnson was a giant among casting directors and uh, I miss him terribly. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, anyone else that might want to speak, you can use the raise your hand feature um, in the reactions. Oh, I see Rosalind Harris. Let's ask to unmute. There we go. I think, think we'll be able go. to hear you. Okay. Hi, Rosalind. Hi. Now this, let me just see if we can. Okay, there we go. Hi, Todd. Congratulations Hi. on your amazing career. And oh, uh, yeah, yeah. And, and for hosting. Sweet. Okay, I have Thanks. a question. Uh, my beloved Sam Toll, aka David Toll, which was his actor's name, um, was not on that list. I called Equity 
and they okay. need certain information that I don't have, like his end of his social security number. So I'm wondering, he died on May 27th of this year. Um, Sam, well, I'll call him David. David told uh, the actor. So uh, shall I honor him now or shall I try to get him on the list and then honor him in the next? Um, you know, I, I think you can do it however you want, but just so everyone knows, sometimes yeah. the, the, the month is not necessarily the month they died. It is the month that it was reported to equity. And yeah. the, things get reported to equity in a number of ways, but the main way is our membership department runs the social security numbers through, there's like this national system of people that have passed. And that's how we really find out. Um, they can, we can also find out through health and pension if someone had vested in their pension. But sometimes the month that is reported is not the month that someone passed. But you know what? I don't, I don't care that the name wasn't read today. I think you should honor someone. You're here. Let's do it. I just want to say, you know, it's interesting. The old me would have had to have something written down. Um, and, I, and my heart is so full. I was too distraught to do a memorial his family wanted to do. And uh, I found out two weeks after he died. Um, Sam, David Toll, when, he, when I first met him, the actor, um, he was my significant other for 39 years in between breakups. <laughs> And then the last, <laughs> the last uh, eight years, we were best, best friends. Sam died of Parkinson's on May 27th, 2022. Sam's story is a little unique. He was a gorgeous, sexy, beautiful man. I have some pictures I just wanna, this was my Sammy, okay. I don't know if you can see this. Oh, gosh. Oh, we can see. We oh, can see. So great. You know, there's Sammy. And let's see. Here's a better one. Okay, this is Sammy. Let's see. The lighting in here. Definitely it's have good. to get more Zoom ready. You see that, Sammy? Okay. Yeah, that, that's another picture. Okay. And then this is him with my doggy. One of my doggies. There's Sammy. <laughs> okay. And uh, where is the last one? This is this is us. Later in life, a little heavier. Okay, so, yeah. Um, Sam was an actor's actor. He studied with Uta Hagen at HB Studio. He was a kind of a Richard Burton type. You know, he was dedicated, he was masculine, he was obsessed and he was angry and he was passionate and he wanted this, career. He did the national tour of Butterflies Are Free. Unfortunately, he did not get to do the Broadway version. When I met him, he was almost at the end of his acting career. My dear friend, Connie Day, who was on Broadway in 42nd Street said, well, Sam's a sexy guy, but I think he needs a nice, warm, loving girl like you. Thanks a lot. <laughs> and my job was to boost him up because he was, look, here's the deal. His career did not go the way he really wished it would. The best thing we ever did was my friend, Ted Drachman, my beloved friend wrote a uh, version of The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe called Narnia. And we did the premiere in California and Sam played the lion and I played the witch and he got to murder me on stage which made him really happy for a few minutes. <laughs> but the truth is that he then morphed into being a writer. He wrote books, he wrote plays. Um, my dear friend, John Lonoff, who was an actor writer, best described Sam. I just took a picture of what he wrote on Sam's Facebook page. And I've just been too upset to do anything, but I will do that um, very soon. Uh, let me see if I can find it, bear with me. Um, yeah, he said, Sam the playwright, the actor, the real estate broker, the political commentator, the loyal Philadelphian, but the Sam I knew best and first was Sam the mensch, flights of doves, brother. And he wrote, he was in a collection of best 10 minute plays. He was a wonderful writer. He wrote novels, he wrote plays. 
he so wanted to be recognized for his work and his passion in the arts. And this is typical of so many actors. I had a 30 year stage career and film career. Some of you may know me that I starred in Fiddler on the Roof as the eldest daughter, Seidel. Now I'm the oldest daughter, but Sammy was, whatever he did, he did with, and this is a word sadly missing in many ways from many things going on in the world. He was a man of integrity, a man of honor, a man who kept his word, who was on time. He was the best friend you could ever have. He had, no, he had the most righteous, honorable human I've ever met. He was so honest and good and he suffered too. But when he became a, a writer and a real estate broker and he started making a living, um, he had to say goodbye to his acting career in that way. And that was okay because he kept writing and I knew him so long. He was funny as heck. He had a wicked sense of humor and he loved mine. And he had a wonderful bunch of friends that were writers and actors. And Sam was the man, Sam was the man. And he was my man for many, many, many years. And I'm very grateful because in his passing, even though we had ended our romantic relationship, he was, I realized the wind beneath my wings, he always was there for me. I've never been loved like that in my life, to have a person that never stopped loving me through all the ups and downs, the ins and outs of career and life. And then to be with a person that cared so deeply about the arts and theater. And we have to do more to support our artists and honor their lives and let them make a good living and, and let them be freely self-expressed in life, whatever it, they need. And I think that this is great that honoring each other and the individuals, many of whom I don't know, but I know that they cared about self-expression and reaching an audience and making a difference in this world and moving people mightily. And that's what Sam did too. He moved people mightily. And I know he's in heaven. He was an angel of a man. And I think his reward is happening there. And I think he's got his place of stardom in the sky. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Rosalind. I see Marin Lee. Hi. 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 Um, I also wanted to uh, honor Marnie Schulenberg. Uh, Nandita spoke so beautifully about Marnie earlier. Um, Marnie really did make everything more fun. Um, Marnie passed away in mid-May. She uh, was two weeks shy of her 38th birthday. Um, she died of inflammatory breast cancer. Um, and I met Marnie at the Pennsylvania Shakespeare Festival. Uh, she was a graduate of DeSales University and she often returned to the Shakespeare Festival to work during the summers. Um, she also uh, appeared in the city with Second Stage, with Flux Theater Ensemble. She was nominated for an Emmy for her work um, on The Young and the Restless, and she had a really wonderful career in television as well. Um, she was the mom to her daughter, Coda, who is two, um, wife to husband, Zach Robidoff, who is also an actor. And she has left such a big hole in our hearts. Um, she was so kind and so giving. She was just an absolute light. I had the pleasure of seeing her play Rosalind and As You Like It a few years ago. And she was incredibly luminous. She had just the perfect touch on the comedy and so much heart in the romance. And um, we all miss her. Thank you so much for offering this space to honor her and the other people who have passed. Thank you so much. I see Doug Carfrey. Hi, Todd. Um, hey, Todd. I would be remiss not to mention someone from the Western region that, that, that needs to be remembered, and that is Calvin Remsburg. Calvin, uh, towards the end of his career, became quite the director and and was a very well-known vocal coach 
in the Western region. He was he was a he was a go the go to guy as a vocal coach for for a lot of very very uh, Im, important um, actors. Um, but 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 earlier in his career, he was no he did um, Beetle Bamford in the national tour of Sweeney Todd for for the whole of the national tour, and then he also did Firmin in. Uh, in uh, Phantom of the Opera, I should know that show, shouldn't I? He did for Man and Phantom of the Opera in LA for for uh, the five or six years it ran. He he was an amazing actor, an amazing voice, an amazing director. I had the opportunity to uh, work with him several times. He directed me in in Sweeney Todd twice, and each time was was. Uh, was was just a delight because he knew the show so well, and he and and he and Stephen Sondheim became quite good friends uh, with his in his uh, time with Sweeney Todd. So he knew he was he was a terrific director. But but beyond that, he was a remarkable man and a remarkable teacher, and he will be missed certainly amongst all of the people who studied with him in the Western region. And I would be remiss not to mention him. And I think I want to say something. Rosalind, uh, when she was speaking about her friend, she said something that that strikes me. I've always felt like this was an important thing we do, saying the names. The names of our people we worked with, people we didn't know, but people who had made a difference in our industry in, in even a small way people that may not be remembered by a whole lot of people, but doing this here and do and as Actors' Equity, announcing and remembering our brothers and sisters who have gone before us is a remarkable thing. And I thank uh, the union and I thank you, Todd, for picking this up. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. Um, I see uh, my vice chair, James A. Williams. Uh, yeah, I just want to make sure that um, three names get said uh, from who had long careers or careers in Minneapolis. Uh, Adolphus Ward, who was actually living in the West Coast in Seattle when Lou Bellamy at Penumbra Theater uh, discovered, I shouldn't say discovered, but became acquainted with him and he brought him in regularly to do a lot of August Wilson shows that we work with together. Um, Michael Ooms, who was second generation equity. His mother and father are Twin Cities royalty, uh, theater royalty, uh, Richard Ooms and uh, Claudia Wilkins. And then I want to mention the man who taught me what it was to be a professional actor. A gentleman named Lewis Whitlock, who appeared on Broadway in Ten Types and then came back home, um, and was the one of the primary musical directors at Penumbra Theater, and he was one of the things that one of the things he taught me was, it's not just enough to be present, you gotta show up. So, <laughs> that's it. Wonderful. Um, I see two more hands raised. Um, I don't, I'm getting a message from, uh, from staff that we don't have time for second time speakers. I think Deborah Jean and Rosalind have both spoken already. Am I wrong? I'm so sorry. Um, we only have an hour for this and I need to start wrapping up because our staff has to go head off to do all the other work that they have to do. Um, so I am going to uh, bring this meeting to a close. Um, but first, I want to bring to your attention that in 90 minutes, there will be a special memorial for David Westfall. Uh, Javon, if you have that slide, I think we can bring that up. Great. Um, David was a member, and he danced in the chorus for years. Then he joined equity staff, and he dedicated his life to the chorus. As he was the keeper, of the legacy robe at 6.30 p.m. Eastern, 
Equity will hold a special legacy robe ceremony in David's honor from Duffy Square. I think we're still in Duffy Square. Is it raining? I'm not sure. But wherever we are, if you can make it live, great. If you're in New York and you want to head down, I'm jealous. I can't get there. But the ceremony will also be simulcast on Facebook. So if you go to Actors Equity Facebook page, you can watch this. And anybody that's ever been at a ceremony um, that David ran, his joy was overflowing. And we um, have had a special patch on the robe made for him, made of a bunch of his ties. And if you remember, David always had the craziest ties on. So um, this will be really special. That brings us to the end of our meeting. As I stated before, this is our first ever equity in memoriam gathering. Um, it is the plan is to do this every three months. Um, if you have any constructive advice on how we can make this better, please feel free to email me at my equity email, tbuonapane at actorsequity.org. I'll keep it up there for a little bit because my last name is strange. It is good bread in Italian, buonapane, tbuonapane at actorsequity.org. Um, I'm so moved by what happened today. Not everyone was spoken about. And, but everyone whose name was read deserves to be honored and celebrated. Like I said, we actors and stage managers lead noble lives. We are storytellers and we affect lives. And I'm so honored that you all joined us today. Um, look out in your email for when we will hold our next one in three months and tell your friends, let's make this bigger and better. I think this is an excellent tool of solidarity for our union. And, um, have a wonderful Monday evening. Thank you so much, everyone.